like what you see here? Then be sure to subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8, a channel devoted to the history of college football. New videos drop twice a week. Click the card in the upper right corner or the link in the description to subscribe now. And now, on with our feature presentation. When you think of Japanese pitchers to play in Major League Baseball, odds are, one of the first names that comes to mind is this guy right here. This is Hideo Nomo, and when he came to Major League Baseball, he took the entire league, and the entire country for that matter, by storm. There are tons of people who became Dodgers fans specifically because of Nomo. He truly was a trailblazer, as he's considered by many to be the first star player from Japan. Sure, there have been plenty of Japanese pitchers to come after him, from the likes of Yu Darvish and Tanaka and Matsuzaka, but none were as big or as influential on the sport as Hideo Nomo was when he came to MLB in 1995. However, for as great as Nomo's rookie season was, and for as universally loved as he was, he got into a ton of trouble during the middle of the season. Sort of. Well, let me rephrase that. He was involved in a controversy that didn't involve him, and was just someone's absolutely terrible idea gone horribly, terribly wrong. Because after a game against the Florida Marlins, where Nomo was on top of the world, he was caught up in just about the dumbest controversy possible that left a ton of people, including the Dodgers and Nomo himself, feeling outraged. And when you break it down, rightfully and understandably so. Because this is the story behind the craziest controversy and incident in the legendary career of Hideo Nomo. Before I talk about the actual incident in question, we need some context to understand how Nomo was playing up until this point, as well as how he was adjusting to life in the United States after coming over from Japan. After a contract dispute in Japan, Hideo Nomo wound up signing with the Los Angeles Dodgers for the 1995 season, becoming one of the first Japanese pitchers, and Japanese players for that matter, to ever play in the major leagues. And to say that Nomo took MLB by storm would be a massive understatement. Nomo mania was absolutely a real thing, and after people's interests in Major League Baseball went down, and understandably so, after the strike canceled the 1994 season early and forced the season to end without a World Series being played for the first time in 90 years, and even spilled over into 1995, Nomo was one of the few things that was actually bringing people back. His starts on the mound were must-see TV, and in Japan in particular. In fact, just to give you an idea of how big his starts were, when he started a game against the Florida Marlins down in Miami, the Marlins gave out 35 credentials to members of the Japanese media, brought in a translator, and gave all the photographers instructions written in Japanese. These games were massive media events. These games were massive attendance draws and they were great for baseball. Oh, and it also helped that Hideo Nomo was awfully good at this sport. The hype was real, as his forkball confused hitters beyond belief. When he had control of that forkball, watch out. During that 1995 season, as a rookie, he led the National League with three shutouts. He was a strikeout machine, as he led the NL in strikeouts with 236 in just over 191 innings of work and led the NL by averaging a whopping 11.1 strikeouts per 9 innings. He had the second best ERA in the National League that year, with a 2.54 ERA, only trailing Greg Maddox of the Atlanta Braves and his ridiculous 1.63 ERA. And his 124 hits allowed, coming out to just under 6 hits allowed per 9 innings, was also the top total in the NL amongst all qualified pitchers. Nomo ended the season winning the NL Rookie of the Year, becoming the third straight Dodger to win the award, alongside Mike Piazza in 1993 and Raul Mondesi in 1994, who you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. And he became the first pitcher to win this award since Todd Worrell won it for the St. Louis Cardinals back in 1986, nearly a decade before. And on top of that, not only was Nomo an all-star, but he finished fourth in the voting for the Cy Young. Bottom line, the hype was real, 
and I could do about an hour-long documentary on Nomomania if I really wanted to, because he was that good and that influential. However, one of the things about Nomo was that when he came over to the majors in 1995, unsurprisingly, he did not speak any English, and required an interpreter to relay the questions to him, and then to talk for him in the press conferences. There are plenty of players like that, and in and of itself, that's not a big deal at all. However, you'll see why this becomes important in just a few minutes when we get to the meat of the controversy. Every interview that Nomo conducted was through his interpreter. Now that's not to say that Nomo wasn't starting to get the hang of some English, and wasn't starting to pick up a few things here and there. Right around the time of the controversy in 1995, the NBA asked Nomo to film a promotional spot, and the people working on the ad, to convey what sport Nomo was going to be promoting, used hand motions to show people shooting and dribbling a basketball. And Nomo told the guys, in English, completely out of nowhere, I know what you're saying. So he was definitely picking up on some things, and trying to learn the language and make his life in America a little bit easier in that regard. But he still needed an interpreter by his side, to do interviews for him. Which takes us to the controversy in question. Because on July 21st, just one day after Nomo pitched eight innings and struck out nine batters in a 4-2 win against the Florida Marlins, seeing as the team was down in Miami, he decided to do an interview with a Miami-based radio station, doing an interview with WQAM 560, the biggest sports radio station in South Florida. And they usually reserve Nomo after demolishing the Marlins lineup last night and demolishing them a week before in LA when he pitched a complete game, one run, three hit, ten strikeout game, was on top of the world. Seriously, over the last week and his last two starts, he had pitched 17 innings against Florida, struck out 19 batters, allowed seven hits and three runs, and his team won both games. So he decided to be extremely cocky and arrogant during this interview, and basically trashed everything about the Marlins, their fan base, their organization, and the city of Miami. Obviously, Nomo didn't say this on the air himself, since he needed an interpreter for everything. But when his interpreter conveyed the message, it left a ton of people feeling shocked, confused, and angry at Nomo. Among the things that Nomo said through his interpreter, the Marlins were a bunch of Little Leaguers. He didn't understand why people were chanting Nomo during the game, and thought it was just a bunch of stupid people. He criticized American baseball fans for not being as knowledgeable as Japanese fans, even going as far as saying that based on his experience with fans in America, they wouldn't know sushi from a slider. He bashed Jeff Conine, and said he had no shot against him, he said that Americans had no idea what a forkball was. He called the Japanese League superior to MLB, and then, to rub salt in the wound, criticized Marlins fans for being terrible because they leave games early. All in all, Nomo decided, on one of the biggest sports radio shows in the country, to do a complete heel turn and showcase his true self as a mean-spirited, nasty person who hates America even though Americans had embraced him. People were furious at Nomo, and the Dodgers got a ton of calls after the interview about his remarks and how awful they were. There was just one small problem. There was just one teeny tiny problem that you might have been able to figure out by now. Yeah, Nomo never said any of that. Not one bit. Remember, Nomo needed an interpreter for everything. So it was his interpreter saying all those comments for Nomo. Except for the fact that, as you might be able to guess, that interpreter wasn't real. It was just some guy named Eric pretending to do it. Nomo was never interviewed that day. He was never on that station. He never said any of those things. It was just some absolutely terrible prank that seemed like an awful idea from the start for anyone who had a brain especially since this was not a comedy station, and was a prominent sports talk radio station, and yet, somehow, turned out to go even worse than anyone could have imagined. The Dodgers and Nomo 
were absolutely furious about this, and Jay Lucas, the director of media relations for the Dodgers, demanded that the station apologize and retract everything, which the station said they would do on Monday, as in, after the weekend, giving time for these comments to linger on as completely legitimate. So that shows you how seriously they took it. As Lucas said, Nomo had been so good for baseball, and he would never in a million years even think about going on the air and saying the things that the fake interpreter did. And the crazy part was that at no point during this entire thing did WQAM announce that this was a spoof. So this wasn't a case of people who were listening the whole time knowing that this was a prank, but people who just tuned in midway through had no idea. This was marketed and presented like the real thing all the way through. And according to Andrew Ashwood, the disc jockey for WQAM, he didn't think he needed to announce that it was a spoof because he introduced the interpreter as the interpreter for Nomo and not for Hideo Nomo. So that's two completely different people. I'm sorry, what? That's your defense? That the audience was stupid for thinking it was Hideo Nomo because you only said his last name? So in reality, it could have been anyone? If I have a sports radio show and I say, coming up next on my show, we're talking to Otani. Or if it's hockey and I say, I'm honored to be joined by Ovechkin, of course people are going to assume that it's that person. What kind of an excuse is that? Especially since Nomo was just playing down in Miami and it was advertised as being a telephone interview conducted from the stadium. So something like this, if it was legit, would have been entirely plausible. Seriously, who else on a sports talk radio show with the last name Nomo could it have possibly been? If you say the Dodgers and Marlins are playing in a few minutes and I'm interviewing Nomo right now, who's coming to us live from the stadium, how could you possibly think it was anyone else but Hideo Nomo? Shaggy's defense in the song It Wasn't Me was a better, more coherent, and more logical defense than the defense by WQAM and Ashwood. Just absolutely pathetic all the way around. And it's not hard to see why people were furious about this. No lawsuit came from this, but if the Dodgers and Nomo decided to pursue something against the station for this, Honestly, even though the bar for defamation of a public figure is pretty high, they might have legitimately had a shot here. Since this was definitely a false statement treated like a fact, the statement was definitely communicated over the airwaves in the flagship sports talk radio station in one of the biggest media markets in the country. The station was definitely at fault, and considering the fact that people called up the Dodgers and were angry about this, and the fact that the station didn't issue an apology until Monday, leading people to believe for a whole 72 hours that Nomo was the one who actually said these comments, and the fact that there was clearly a reckless disregard for the truth here, and the fact that maybe his reputation was harmed because of this, they might have actually had a case. It would have been very interesting to see. However, the statute of limitations has long expired since then. Because in 1995, when Hideo Nomo arrived on the scene, he was unstoppable. To the point where the only thing that could stop Nomo was someone with a dumb, stupid, and pathetic idea at a radio station pretending to be him. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL Trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.